So we're here at the Ontario Regiment Museum today. I'm Johan from Sabbath Videos, and we're with the museum member Mihai today. Mihai, you're a member of the team restoring the Flak 36 here. Uh, can you tell us a bit about the cannon as it is right now and what you guys are planning to do with it? Hello, uh, thanks for coming. Um, so as you can see, uh, we have a Flak uh, uh, 36 that we're restoring. Um, right now, it's, there's been quite a bit of work done to it. Um, uh, right there you can see, for example, the winch of one of the bogies that's been restored. There's some other parts that have been worked on in the back there. So um, we're pretty much in the uh, phase of uh, rebuilding the drivetrain for the, the gun, um, the carriages in other, way, in, a, in other words, sorry, that are uh, supporting the gun. And our goal for this uh, summer is to get that part done so the gun can be mobile and uh, have more extensive work done to it. So then, what type of condition is it in now? Is the gun able to traverse and elevate, or...? So, uh, all the functions of the guns are uh, in operating condition, so it will elevate. Uh, we have the top part, which is the, the recuperator is off, but other than that, it's pretty much operational. The breech was welded shut, but uh, we have the breech cleared, so theoretically you could actually put a shell in it. Uh, firing mechanism is 90% uh, there, so it's a it's, uh, fairly good condition, I would say, yeah. And, and will you be aiming to reactivate the gun? Or? Uh, that's, that's one of the goals we're, we're working on, is to be able to demonstrate Probably, uh, I don't know, uh, like a, a shell firing uh, kind of um, scenario, yeah. Right. And we were talking earlier and you said over the course of restoring the gun, you guys found a lot of interesting engineering facts and engineering compromises that the Germans integrated into their manufacturing of the flak weapon system. Can you tell us a bit about them? Yes. Um, so, for example, um, working on the winch that's in front of us here, one of the the top parts has this little, um, I'll just grab it quickly. This, uh, it's basically a bearing housing. And the interesting part of it, if you actually play close attention to it, there's a lot of pitting. Um, actually, pitting is not the correct term. It's more uh, defect in, in the way the metal was casted. And basically, in any kind of uh, other type of environment, manufacturing environment, this would be considered a failed part. But the Germans were so desperate in manufacturing uh, these guns that they would use actually defective metal to, uh, you know, put it in service. And this is a clear example of, of that. Uh, we found uh, bolts that are made by hand, uh, nuts that are made by hand, all kind of other components that are basically made on the spot, so to speak. Right. Yeah. So um, I understand you were a former tanker as well. Yes. So from the perspective of a tanker, um, what what's it like compared to some of the equipment you work with? And for you, what do you think of all this? Well, it's it's quite an interesting mix because it's a mix between a lot of engineering. It's it's a high tech weapon. Uh, some really funny manufacturing principles and uh, quite some really advanced uh, uh, military principles like a remote fire control system, uh, uh, telecommunication systems way ahead of, of their time. So interesting mix, very interesting mix right. of technologies. Well, thanks a lot for your time, Mihai. I'm sure, sure we'll catch back up with you as you continue the restoration. Sure, absolutely. Yep.